in this age of uncertainty questions come to my mind what is waiting ahead for me and the rest of mankind fear not to
worship him this morning. Y'all sing it with them. Come on, let's worship him. Come on.
But I know that my God will do Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you this morning for the presence of the Holy Spirit in this house. And for those who don't feel you, those who don't enjoy this, I pray for them. I ask you, God, to touch them. I'm not talking about emotion. I'm not talking about running. I'm talking about worshiping you. You deserve worship from your people. I ask you, God, to help us to worship you more, to thank you more, and praise you more. I ask you now to bless this word. I ask you to fill this place with your anointing through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's please turn to Ecclesiastes. The second chapter. I'm going to preach today on Father's Day on this subject. Look at life. Look at life. If you look at your life for the next few minutes, you're going to have to have courage. You must be honest as you look at your life. Solomon, inspired by the Holy Spirit to pen these words, was not some second-class citizen. He was the third king of Israel. He had 40,000 stalls of horses. He had 12,000 men who would tend his horses. 40,000 stalls of horses. He would write 3,000 proverbs. He would write two psalms. He would pen 105 songs. And Solomon is looking at life. How can someone who had all that look at life? But Solomon does. And what he finds in life to him is disappointment. Look at life today, if you will. Let's please stand to honor God's infallible word. We we'll read in verse 11, Solomon says, Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. You may be seated. 28 times in Ecclesiastes, you will find the same words, under the sun. And that's where Solomon would look, under the sun. And everywhere he looked, he'd find emptiness, he would find vanity, he would find worthlessness. But Solomon took a long look at life and have the understanding of life. Everything under the sun was here temporarily. It was not here for everlasting. So he looks at life, verse 11 says, three words, then I looked. Then I looked. And what he has to begin with is dependency on oneself. That's what we are sometimes. We have a complete dependency on ourself. As you and I look at life, we depend upon ourself and what you and I can do about the life. Please follow me in your word in Bible today. Let's go back to verse number 11. You'll find three words. I, my, I. Verse 3 now with me. The first two words in verse 3. I saw. Verse 4. I made me great works. I builded, verse 4, I planted, verse 5. I made, verse 5, I planted, verse 6, I made, verse 7, I got, verse 8, I gathered. 
he had full dependency on himself and what he had done and what, how he had labored and what he has accomplished. When you look at life and all you see is achievements and all you see are buildings and all you see is accumulation, what you find is what Solomon found is all vain, it's all empty. Because all of those accumulations, achievements, and buildings that you have, that you cherish so close to your life today, after a while, moth and rust will corrupt, and thieves shall break through and steal. As you look at your life this morning, it must be far above achievements. It must be more than buildings. It must be more than accumulations. As you look at your life this morning, as I look at my life today, Paul, Solomon says, all this time is what I have done and what I have accomplished. But now please look at verse 10. You have the Bibles open? Verse 10. And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy. For my heart rejoiced in all my labor. And this was my portion on my part of all my labor. Again, what Solomon was able to do. But every accomplishment and every achievement and all the buildings we have around us, every fame that is good and perfect comes down from heaven. It's not mine, it's not yours, it has to be the Lord's. It has to be recognized as being His. And Solomon says, then I looked, verse 11, and what I saw in my life under the sun, I had a full dependency on myself. I can do that. I can get through this. I can maintain this. I can accomplish this. This is what I can do. I can do it right by myself. I can do all these things myself. And look at all my past, and my past, what I have accumulated. Look at what I have today. Not only dependency on oneself, number two, but the disappointment of dependency on oneself. Please now, verse 11, say with me. Then I looked on all the works of my hands and wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all, everything was vanity. And the excitation of the word means, it means troubling of spirit. And there was no profit or no gain under the sun. You would think to have what he had, he would say, there's gain and there's profit. He says, no. Everywhere I look, some 28 times under the sun, I have the same, I have the same result. I have found nothing but vain and emptiness. People ride across their property on Sunday mornings with a pickup truck and look at what they have. The cows, the grass, the fence, the ponds. They enjoy on Sunday morning doing this. Not in church, not serving God, looking at what they have. And they cannot carry any of that with them. Look at your life this morning, sir, on Father's Day. Take a long look today at your life and your dependency on yourself. But now number three, the devastation that comes. Verse 17, please read me the first four words. Therefore I hated life. Are you being honest? Therefore, he says, I hate life. 40,000 stalls of horses, 12,000 men who would help him with the chariots and horses, write 3,000 proverbs, 1,005 songs, the third king of Israel. He says, I hate life. I hate life. Under the sun, everywhere he looked, he says, I hate life. What a sad place to be in the world 
that God has created, and especially a born-again Christian, to be honest and say, I hate my life. I hate it. Let's read on, please, in verse number 17. Let's see why he hated life. Because the work that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me. For all that is vanity and vexation of spirit, my spirit's trouble. Yea, I hated all my labor, which I take it under the sun, because I should leave it to a man that should be after me. I'm going to leave all this stuff to somebody else. Everything I have, somebody else going to have it. If they don't get the government will get it. So Solomon says, I hate life. Everything I have, somebody else will have it. And that's the truth. You will not have a U-Haul behind the hearse. Everything that you hold so tightly this morning, you'll leave behind. The former things will pass away. So you hate life. No wonder. Your life is what you have achieved in your buildings, in your house, in your possession, your 401K, your money. That's your life. And what a sad life to live. What a sad life to live. For material things, temporal things, all this to be your life, if that's your case, then you hate your life. I'm not against stuff. Neither is God, unless stuff has you. And your stuff has you. When everything else around you replaces him, then God doesn't like that. Look at verse 18 again. Yea, I hated all my labor, which I had taken on the sun, because I should leave it unto the man that should be after me. You need to mark that down for your will. I'm going to spend some time now preaching. I'll give you an introduction. Look at life. Some of you won't do that because you have conviction if you look at your life. Because so far in your life, if you'll be honest, Jesus has been your co-pilot and not your pilot. He's been your spare tire. You haven't allowed him to drive it. He's been the one you pull out when you have a tragedy. You put him out in tragedy, and you put him back in from your life until the next tragedy, and you put him back out again. If you be honest, he's not in your life number one. Your material things, other things are, but not him. Not him. And if you be honest at that statement, you see, you hate your life. It's a vapor. It's going by quickly. Every breath you breathe is one more breath close to eternity, either heaven or hell. Don't spend too much time on this life. Don't spend too much time with your buildings, your stored houses, your closet, your cars, your trucks, your four-wheelers, your deer stand, your fishing rod, or golf clubs. Don't spend much time. After a while, you'll look back over your life and a song that says will be your theme, Wasted Years. Wasted Years. But you know... We had to keep up with the Joneses. We had to keep up with the Joneses. We got to make sure we have what they've got. And it's called covetousness. It's called coveting. And it's called life that you hate. Let's please turn down your Bibles. I hope you follow me in the Bible. Luke 12. I need a little, little time. Luke 12, if you leave your Bible closed, you have no interest in what I'm saying. Luke 12, 
In verse 15, I will only preach the Bible here. So you bring your Bible, you'll be, you be in the right place. Luke 12 with me. I'm going to read with you verse 15. Jesus says, Take heed and beware of covetousness. Listen now. For man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Solomon had that. Solomon had everything that I could behold and want. He says, I got it. And Solomon says, I saw my life under the sun, and I hated my life. Jesus says, listen, your life will not consist only in the things that you possess. That's not what life is. I saw this in my growing up with my parents. You've heard me tell you a story. I thought we were rich. I thought we were prosperous. I realized years later, we didn't have nothing. My daddy died in a rental home. He left behind zero. 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 But mama, I thought she was prosperous. I thought she was rich. But I found out she wasn't. But life, what a life. What a life. Precious memories of a home that didn't have anything but little. But I found out that little is much when God is in it. Luke 12, verse 16, he spoke a parable. Let's read the parable. A grant of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. He thought with himself, saying, what shall I do? I have no room where to stow my fruits. Then said he, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And thou will bestow all my fruits and my goods. Eleven times, don't count it, I, my. Eleven times, I, my, I, my. I have nowhere to bestow my blessings. But who brought the blessing? The ground did. The ground brought it. Not him. The ground that God made brought it. Not him. God did it. I have no place to bestow my foods. I feel I'm going to get some bigger storage houses. But look at verse number 19. I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thy ease. He can be drink and be merry. And that's what people today in general are at. I'm going to just take my time. Look what we have, honey. Call the bank. Double check it. I'd be in the rocking chair on the front porch. We're going to rock our way in the glory. I'm going to eat and drink and be merry. We have enough to last us all our life. And one moment could change everything. I was in the hospital room this past week with a man. He said, last Thursday night, a week ago, I went into bed feeling wonderful. And Friday morning, I could not even walk out of my house. Couldn't even walk out of it. In one split moment, everything in life can change. One moment, one second, one moment, everything can change. Let's finish it. Luke 12, verse 20. But God said unto him, Thy fool. This night my soul to be quiet of thee. Listen now. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? Christ says in a parable, you're a fool. You're a fool. Tonight your soul must answer to eternity. Tonight your soul is going to face eternity. Then shall whose Things be 
that you leave behind. The most important part of your life today and my life and those by way of sight is the soul. Not the ability to play sports. Not the ability to be a good cheerleader. Not the ability to be an honor roll student. Not the ability to have a good income. It's the soul. The soul. He says, fool, tonight your soul is required of you. Use your eye. Use your mind 11 times. It don't matter. Who shall these things be then? Look at life. Some of you won't do it. Because you got everything you think under control. You got your own schedule, your own pace, your own plan, and you won't even look at your life. You won't do it. Because you don't want to see what you'll see is somebody that really hates your life. It's a good thing to love yourself. It's a good thing to get along with yourself. It's a good thing to enjoy being around yourself. And that way you can have a life worth living. After 10 years of marriage, my wife says, you got to get some mental help. <laughs> I was not satisfied with anything. And my yard was groomed in the rain. If my hair and grass come up, I go out in the rain and pull it up. I changed tires. When the tires had thread, I was never satisfied. In church, lead music. Not, not satisfied. Nothing until she said, you got to get some help. If you don't want to have to leave you, the one that loves me too much. I'll briefly give you the story. It's a rerun. February 13, 1977. This miserable, unsatisfied human being went to a church. Walked in the front door. Pastor said, here comes Brother Hemphill, Miss Hemphill, lead our music. I went through the motions, like some do, dead as a doornail. I led the music. I sat down with my wife. He preached. Brother Hemphill led the invitation song for us. Thank God y'all here. Then he had no help. I led the song. I said, thank God it's old wedding now. He said, Brother Hemphill, would you close us in prayer? And this is what I said. Oh, God, and then I stopped, went to an altar. This is what I said. Oh, God, if you don't come through, I'm not going to make it. If you don't come through, I am not going to make it. He said, Dean, from this point forward, I fight all your battles for you. If you'll let me, I got up, went back to my church, that sorry man run church. I went back there. And the next Sunday night, where Ronnie K. is sitting, God called me to preach the gospel. Miserable backslider, hated life, who <laughs> needed a psychiatrist. And the great counselor walked in. And said, if you'll let me, if you'll let me, brother, I'll fight all your battles. <laughs> and Dave, my, my hair grass comes up today. I said, how you doing, boys? <laughs> you'll die this fall. <laughs> Amen. You become kind of crazy. A fool for Christ. But you have something called life, and what Christ said, you have now life more abundantly. Father, today, 
I pray for Holy Spirit conviction upon us fathers who are leading our homes in the wrong direction. We're giving our kids and grandkids a wrong, a wrong impression. We have time to stop it. We have time to change directions. And many in this room, I think, hate their life today. They hate their life. They just hate it. They have a job they don't enjoy. Go home to like that the home they don't even like. Married to a spouse they don't get along with. And they hate it. But I know from experience everything is settled at the cross. Everything is settled before your throne. I pray today in this altar call today. We'll have fathers and men and young boys leading the path to you. And I pray for souls that are lost now, going to a devil's hell to burn. I pray that they, they'll say, Jesus, save me. I'm dying. I'm dying without Christ. And I pray for others trying to find a church home, lead them to a place to become involved in a church home. Holy Spirit, it's all yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's please stand. <laughs>
To look at your life is something very important. Many of us never do that. Take a long, close look at our life. Also, to admit, as we look at our life, the things that we're doing wrong, the wrong goals we have in life, the wrong things we aim for. But it's very important in a Christian's life especially that once in a while we take a long look at our life based it upon the Word of God. And what we find wrong with our life, ask the Lord to help us to do it right. Because life is a one-time deal. We get one shot at it, even as a Christian. So try your best to spend your life. Every once in a while, look at your life. And what you and I find wrong with it, ask God to help us correct it. By doing that, we we'll again have life, and we have it more abundantly. Until next time for Clark Chapel Baptist Church, I trust you'll have great days.